guys, welcome back to the channel and today we're gonna to be reacting to How Finland became the world's happiest country Became? So who spot did it take? Denmark, I think Denmark? It's oh. a miserable, terrible, awful country I would hate to live here Wait, no, that's well, Canada Look at hmm. this cold, dark, isolated country well, I would also hate to live here Oh wait, this is apparently the happiest country on earth, Finland This is the happiest? The, the Can you imagine bears, how miserable They're violent though yeah, but they're not like down south. Well, the rest of the world must be, and they're the happiest by a pretty wide margin. Here's the rest wow. of the list, and then BAM! Finland jumps way ahead of Denmark at the first place. Wow. So what can we learn from Finland for us non-Finns to be happy too? Let's look for some know. clues so we can stop crying and maybe cheer up for once. Are they happy from their climate? Now you might be thinking, <laughs> hmm. what are you talking about? Of course it's not their climate. This country is full of blizzards, rain, permanent nighttime, at least long winter nights in the south, and mosquitoes. So many mosquitoes. Okay. But out of the top 10 happy. Okay. We have some problems already. Yeah, Denmark is number two, so they're okay. But yeah, what's the problems? Like, the climate, the weather conditions. But. I That's, that doesn't sound appealing whatsoever. Right, I can't speak. Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes, so and I had a lot of them too. Uh, Ooh. Uh, I can't speak for the reasoning, but in what Lithuania, I can... do you have the mosquitoes, like, if you're driving, they hit the yeah. windshield? Mm -hmm. I've never seen that in real life before. Yeah, they do. Wow. Uh, what I feel like, maybe, you know, because, like, here, for example, we do have the weather great, mm -hmm. but that weather is expensive. The, oh. It's so expensive, you have to work so hard to get that weather. Finland now is not the cheapest country based on my reaction, so yeah, I, don't, that's what I'm I don't saying. know if I can correlate that to because yeah. all oh, people more relaxed down have to work as hard. What about Probably the not, rules? but well, I don't know. Let's yeah. get, we don't admit it in. If, if you want to know, that's why. It's, mm -hmm. Countries on Earth, pretty much all of them are cold. The happiest hot country oh. is Australia, and it's all the way down at 11. Maybe yeah, there's something spiders. to a cold breeze that makes them unhappy. But our theory is not always true. Hot Costa Rica is happier than lukewarm Britain, and boiling Saudi Arabia is happier than hot Italy. So even though the weather might not influence happiness that much, the environment might. Finland is a wooded country. It's got a lot of bush. A whole two-thirds of the country is forest. The trees that might have been relevant in the 1800s, but it's the 2000s now. Most people don't live in the woods. They live in cities. At least 85% of people. You'd be the small percentage of the the trees. Live in No, the woods. I'm not saying live in the woods, but it's nice to have the ability. Well, it's not like live in the, not like the deep woods, but you get a little forest like, next to you. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Why is there water? Cities are supposed to look like this. Road, stores, skyscrapers, road, more road, smog, road. It's not supposed to have nature. But the average Finnish city uses 30 to 40% of its space for what it calls green space, including Helsinki's big Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, that's cute. Green that's exactly what I'm cute. saying. It's nice. Finnish residents even say that their number one priority for their cities is transportation, like literally everyone else on Earth. But their number two priority is proximity to nature. It also helps that Finnish cities are some of the least densely populated in Europe and none have a population over a million, so nature is always near to them. Nice. That seems like a good way to be happy. Could it be their culture? At over 90% Finnish, 60% Lutheran, and small percent Sami in the north, Finland is quite homogenous. They have a culture of education and innovation, with most people having a bachelor's degree and having a 100% literacy rate. Not a single person can't read. I don't know how much I believe that, considering their language looks like... They also have an egalitarian culture that shows up particularly well in its work. You know, flat organization, autonomous decision making, strong work benefits, and the average work week only being 35 hours long. Just now, the 35 hours long might uh, do a lot. To, that's five extra hours. Of, like basically, so what? One work, uh, one hour a day less, or work one hour more and take uh, Fridays off. Mm. You know, don't show up late. They'll beat the. Sh out of you if you do. Showing up late would probably break their trust and Finns have built their society very trusting, trusting, trusting. Maybe the cold and six centuries of foreign rule forced the Finns to rely on their neighbor, can't do much alone when outside looks like this, and can't go alone when your Swedish ruler drags you into another war. Or maybe they're just trusting because of the low crime rates and economic security the Finns have. So could it be security that makes the Finns so happy? Usually worrying about fighting a war or having your house robbed when you're gone or stepping outside and getting immediately shot is not great for your mental health. And Finland is a very safe and secure country. Having their crime rate since Ooh. the 90s, having a 0.2% poverty rate, 100% electricity access, and a very long life expectancy. Their biggest crime contributing to that tiny rate? 
it was traffic offenses. Demographically, they're also fairly secure at 5.5 million people expected to fall to around 5 million by 2100. That's not too big a drop, not like some of the drops in population other European nations are expected to face. It will be hard on the economy, but relatively small to make a relatively happy time. Geopolitically, too, they're in a secure region. They're tucked safely inside the European... When was this? Because uh, I wonder if this was before the, you know, Russia-Ukraine conflict. No, this was after. So I guess that didn't affect the people's, you know, how they feel about it. Being for a free market, coddled by NATO for free defense, and all their neighbors are rich and stable. Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Germany, maybe Estonia, and... Oh, right. Russia, too. Dealing with the Russians has always been high on the Finnish concerns list. They've always had to bounce between the West and Russia. After all, Russia would love a port in Helsinki, and the Finns are tiny compared to the Russians. They would get annihilated by them, right? Well, Exhibit 1, no. And Exhibit 2, also no. The Russians probably wouldn't annihilate the Finns, but they've shown they might still try. So in 2022, Finland applied to join NATO just for that extra layer of security. And there's another aspect of security, economic security. Does money really solve happiness? Well, I have two things to say. One, Finland wasn't always rich. They used to be a backwater, a sludge water, a stick in the mud nobody cared about for most of history. And two, yes, money does make you happy, so this video was sponsored by Surfshark. Just kidding. So back to the real economy. For most of history, Finland was poor. I'm talking trenches poor. In a time when the standard of living was pretty much equal to how much your family could farm, this wintry landscape wasn't exactly the richest. It wasn't the freest either, being under Swedish rule until 1809 and then a Russian rule until 1917 when they had that whole revolution. Although they generally had a great amount of autonomy to focus on whatever they wanted. So the law, money, banking, and integrity have been stable for centuries, developing trust. 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 This is great news for developing Seems the economy. trust is like the fact, common like denominator. There's like a lot of trust and security. Trust, 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 and security. Because the rest of it wasn't so great. In terms of natural resources, Finland pretty much only had two. Water and wood. Can't easily export water, at least without exporting food through virtual water, so wood was their moneymaker for most of history. Or, I guess, pulp, paper, peat, parchment, print, you name it. In fact, the whole reason they even started to industrialize in the 1800s was to build sawmills to meet new Russian lumber demand. And by the time of the World Wars, their wood phase wasn't over. Wood products made up four-fifths of their exports, one-third of their industry, and one-half of their jobs, along with agriculture. The wood trade only deepened the balancing act between Western Europe and Russia. Do we industrialize like these fellows and become filthy rich, or do we keep chopping trees for the Russians and become stinking rich? Well, they had no time to think about that because the Russians invaded them in 1939. The Winter War might have prevented a communist government, but it also meant they lost nearly 70,000 men, 10% of their territory, and were forced to pay reparations. Bummer. So during the Cold War, not wanting to repeat that whole mess again, the Finns officially stayed neutral, although definitely leaned more to the West than the East from the sour relationship. They stayed out of NATO, stayed out of the EEC, and stayed out of the Marshall Plan to rebuild Europe. Sure, they still sold timber to the West and slowly started the Soviet trade back up again too, getting much of their energy from them, but they invested that money back to make machines. Elevators, ships, and paper machines. They started manufacturing them and selling them to the Soviets. So from their new wealth, they decided to try to fit in with the other Scandinavians and try out the Nordic welfare model. Education for all, social care, health care, maternity leave, blah, blah. And they continued this slow and gradual path to richness, emphasizing education and innovation above all to make a heavily mm. research and development-based economy. Yeah, all nice. Until the Soviets collapsed in the 1990s. Hmm, so that means... This is a little history lesson. This is... Yeah, uh, it's a lot. Yeah, we're basically getting a history of uh, films. Okay. Their trade then just fell dramatically, and I guess that means their currency just collapsed, which, wait, that means their banks, which were already deep in debt, just collapsed, and Finland was hit with the biggest depression it's ever had, as everyone decided now was not a good time to invest in anything. They recovered by the 2000s, but they pretty much gave up paper. It was all innovation now. You might have even heard of some Finnish tech creations. Nokia, Linux, the first internet browser, SMS, basically texting, Angry Birds, and Clash of Clans. All this made with a tiny population. The new Finland is booming, economically secure. Now, oh L yeah, they make money. Linux is cool, but Linux is open source. I know where you pay for that, so I don't know why he included it. And on the cutting edge of technology. But if there's one thing you should take away from this, it's that there wasn't one moment Finland became rich. It was really yeah. a build-up from stable institutions of business over 150 years. So is it welfare that makes them so happy? Perhaps the security it brings them makes them worry a lot less. But how do they even afford it? Well, Finland is not Norway. The Norwegian government gets nearly half of its revenue from oil money. Finland doesn't have this luxury. And the average Norwegian is almost twice as rich as the average Finn, so they've got a lot more revenue to tax. Finland has to go to those industries that were slowly built over 150 years and tax them for its revenue. Finland has one of the highest tax burdens on Earth. Number two for personal income at almost 50... God damn, over half of money you pay. Wow. Wow. 
That's crazy. I mean, but they're happy though. But it's still crazy. And top 10 in sales tax at nearly 25%. But luckily for the Finns, their government also has a fairly competent accounting department. Every electoral term, the government is given pretty strict spending limits that they have to stick to. It's not every year, it's every government. This means they usually end up with a 2-3% to surplus, and although they did get into some serious debt during their depression in the 90s, they ended up bouncing it back up with their 2000s boom, and then deficit again with 2008. But as their population ages, shrinks, and takes that tax money back through pensions, they've had to go back to this deficit spending, which is threatening their Nordic wealth fair way of life and could scare investment. Well, what are they getting for all this spending though? Pensions, free education, unemployment benefits, healthcare, family benefits, state subsidized housing, government loans on housing, and of course the training needed to deliver these services. Sounds mm. pretty nice to me. It also helps you could actually trust, trust, trust that your government will get these services to you. In a lot of less developed nations, your tax bill will come, you'll wait for the new services you'll get and keep waiting and keep waiting and keep waiting no. and they never seem to come. Trusting that the government won't screw you when you give them 57% of your income is pretty important to feel secure. So it's up to you personally to decide if you would take this deal, but taking it doesn't seem to make them any sadder. Okay, that's way too much about this happy, jolly, jovial nation. Let's talk about their problems. First is obviously their shrinking population threatening their whole welfare model, bringing rising debt and falling investment along with it. Second, they have a housing crisis. But that's interesting. So why is the population shrinking if people have great benefits for, you know, Parenthood, because here population is shrinking because it's just expensive to have kids, and you know, you don't get time off really. Like how in European countries, if you see there's parental leave, uh, not pa fraternal, leave, fraternal, fraternal, right? and paternal, maternal. Yeah, paternal, yeah, paternal. We do get maternal, but it's super short. But in Europe, they also get paternal leave. So like, there's very incentivized to have uh, kids. But so why is the population shrinking? That's interesting. House prices are climbing at a pretty scary rate, but tell me which developed nation isn't facing a housing yeah. crisis. Am I right? <laughs> I wish I could afford a house. Third, the whole Russia situation isn't getting any friendlier right now, and it sucks considering Russia was a huge supplier of energy to them. When they got cut off from Russian gas, electricity prices rose almost 50% in one year. They had to get some... Yeah, they had the same in Lithuania too. The prices rose significantly for electricity. All plants back online to meet demand, and it doesn't help that 30% of their electricity comes from wood still. Jeez, wood? Wow. Someone helped Finland get out of the 1730s with their wood-burning plants. Get them some oil, uranium, at least a wind turbine. Fourth, sure, Finland is happy on the aggregate, but a lot of Finns are still sad. Finland um. has 1.2 times the rate of mental illness than the EU and are 66% more likely to abuse drugs and alcohol than the European counterpart. Well, that's the weather for you. It could be from social exclusion, especially among lower classes, a stereotypically isolationist culture, or simply just a bigger drinking culture in Finland, especially of hard liquor. And fifth and finally, two of their main industries, paper and Nokia, Apple destroyed both of those, but they're still quite diversified and complex. So to be happy, some keys are transparency, security, money, but most importantly, trust. Trust. Trust, mm. trust in your yeah, government, neighbors, like businesses, it. schools, I don't know, trust in your dog. Trust that in five years from now, you'll also be in a comfortable position, and if anything happens to you, you can trust someone will help you. Trust, 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 trust. Trust me, it's what made Finland happy. Oh, wow. well, interesting. I mean, it does make sense, because you know the Maslow's pyramid of needs, like the security is... Uh, the base right so stress security they kind of go hand in hand makes sense uh but it is very interesting that can you apply it to other nations trust uh, I, That's hard. would be interesting to see like all top 10 countries what kind not, not maybe not individual but what do they have in common that makes them top 10 you know that would be interesting to see mm -hmm. by because it is interesting, and I also would, would like to see kind of how they score the happiness, what are the key points of happiness, you know, mm -hmm. that's also interesting. Because you really have to be that happy, at what cost? Right, there's always trade-offs, right, the weather is big, but for some people, whether, you know, though maybe those people that don't like bad weather, they just don't live there, you know, so mm -hmm. those who do live there, they like, good, like, they like their weather, so that's not a factor, you know. Mm -hmm. And that you know they scored highly, but very interesting, yeah, interesting video, uh, mm. interesting, interesting subject overall. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was shocked to hear that um, they still had like issues like with drinking, um, with abuse of like well, substances. The the weather, you know, it does 
the but it's consistent is, that most of the happiest countries they're cold, quite cold. I would think it would be opposite. I always was pushed maybe like the islands. I think what I guess maybe the weather doesn't play as important role in happiness as we think it does. I think mm -hmm. that's the thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's just what it is. Hmm. Guys, of course, let us know your thoughts. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Join the Discord and as always, as always, share as much kindness as possible.